today is gonna be a good day that today is gonna be thank you so much man thank you for bringing me here mm. i've been in kenya for two good weeks and all i eat is ugali with salt which is tasty right she gave me ugali and all i need to do is to put salt in there and then blend it but i was craving for ghana fufu man you know that i can't live without fufu so she said there is a restaurant in nairobi called mama ashanti i'm gonna i need to know the person behind this mm. you don't yeah. think so yeah mama ashanti it definitely has to be a woman must um, be Ghanaian. Maybe a Kenyan. Even if, even if, came back. even if it's a Ghanaian or a, a Kenyan, it has to be a woman. Mm, yeah. Mama Ashanti. Mm. Because this food can only be cooked by women. She. Whoa. I'm so sorry, Steven. Like, I'm so sorry, my camera guy. I know today, even you won't have the chance to enjoy the bones. Hmm. This is, um, oh, what is this? You don't know this? Oh, they don't know. I know fufu. Yes, this is fufu. This is the main course in Ghana. Mm. Fufu yeah, is it's like, like our ugali here in Kenya. Exactly. No, uga you can't compare ugali with fufu. You can compare ugali with banku. Uh, yeah, okay. not this one. It's because you said it's your main course. So exactly. ugali is the main course in Kenya. Yeah, this is a mixture of cassava and plantain, and this is a granite soup with goats. Mm. This is heavenly. You know what? We are going to find out. Who made this? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I need to talk to him before I leave here. Yeah. Cut. Let me go and look for the person. Thank you. You know what? I'm looking for Mama Ashanti. Uh -huh. And you don't look like you are Mama Ashanti. I'm Baba Ashanti. Baba. <laughs> 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 because when I ate the food, I said, like, who is the woman who cooked this food? Yes. And you are the one popping up? No. You see, there's, you have to divide, you have to divide the, the responsibilities. Uh -huh. So the face is Baba. The one behind? The one behind where the real thing comes from is Mama. <laughs> yeah. So there's Mama Shanti and Baba Shanti. Baba Shanti. So you are a Baba Shanti. Yes. <laughs> I just want to know, yeah? My name is Wadamaya from Ghana. Yes. And your name is? Senanu. Senanu from Ghana? Yes, yes. Which part of Ghana? The Volta region? Volta. Agbozuma. Hey! <laughs> and what are you doing in Kenya? Well, I'm making sure that when people like you come, you have a hospitable place to come and have some food, to come and share fellowship with Kenyans. Mm. Uh, it's also for Kenyans to be able to taste our food from Ghana or West Africa, because uh, this is not Ghanaian, it's West African. You have ugali here? Of course, we also have ugali here. You have here. ugali with salt? Uh, we don't put salt in ugali. Ah. When I came in here, I saw ugali, uh -huh. and I'm like, this tastes like akpene without yeah. salt. Yes. So I had to put salt in, <laughs> and with a nyamachoma, and everyone was looking at my face like, are that, you crazy? That, that's a sacrilege. <laughs> you know, that's destroying other people's food. You uh, should never do that. I won't do that again. Yeah. I'm so sorry for Kenyans. And you know what? Since you're from Ghana, I don't know how long have you been in Kenya? 27 years. 27 years in Kenya? Uh-huh. Why did you leave Ghana? And decided to settle oh, in Kenya. I, I came, no, I didn't. I came here for holiday. I'm still on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> 27 years ago, you came for holidays. Yes. And you're still on holidays. Yes. How is that possible? Your visa has not expired yet. No, it didn't. They gave me permanent visa. Oh, <laughs> you have a Kenyan passport or are you still using a Ghanaian passport? I have both. Tell me the reason why you decided to settle in here for 27 good years. Well, various reasons. I came here, as I said, on a holiday mm. and... Um, I discovered that uh, I was not, my, my, my body wasn't good with the cold because there's a part of Kenya which is very cold, close to the mountains mm. and also a place called Eldoret where the runners. the runners come from. So I was meant to go to the US, to North Carolina, which would have been very cold. And my dad was, uh, my dad was a lecturer here at that time. He was like, if you can't take the cold here in Eldoret, you'll die in the US. So why don't you stay, wait for the summer to go? So during that period, I applied for any uh, American colleges here so I could take some credits when I'm going in the summer. And then I got into the American University called 
USIU. And uh, I did my first term. I got four A's, unfortunately. I did the second, I got another four A's, and I was given a scholarship. To go to the US? No, to finish there. Here. So I finished my undergrad. In Kenya? In Kenya. And after undergrad, you didn't want to go back to Ghana? I did. I went back to Ghana. And what happened? For holiday, for six months. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like you having holidays? Yes, Africa. it was just holidays. So you went to Ghana for holidays? I went to Ghana for holidays. I tried to look for something to do. Nothing came. Hmm. I said, ah, let me come back. To Kenya? So I, said, I came back to Kenya with a suitcase full of Ghanaian clothes. And what happened to the clothes? So clothes, I've, I've had a clothing business for quite a long time. Do you mean you were selling those clothes that you came from? With the yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to sell clothes. In evenings Kenya. evenings, and weekends. I, I, it's, I called, it's, called, it's called being a hustler. Being a hustler? Yeah. Which year was this? 96, 97. Mm. That's when I started. I finished, so I came here in 93. I finished university in 95. I went back to Ghana. I came back in 96. I did clothes for, you can say, six months to a year mm. and set up a business in clothes. I left it and I, I, I started doing telecommunication. I went into sales of telecommunication. Mm. So I've been in telecommunication industry for 25 years. 25 years. Um, but on, I've also had the businesses in terms of clothing business and in terms of food. So this is five years, what you see here today. Oh, okay. We started in 2015. Was this the first one you ever established? No, 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 no. This is fourth time lucky. I failed three times in order to get this. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. You, you tried to set up a restaurant. I tried to set up a restaurant failed. and I failed. Three the times? Three times. This is the last one. This is the fourth one, not the last, the no, fourth. fourth. <laughs> <laughs> there, shall, there shall be many other enterprises. Okay, very soon, yeah? Yes. But, but, but what is the secret behind Mama Ashanti? Because, you know, everyone is telling me about Mama Ashanti. Yes. I even saw it in my comment section. People are like, oh, stop eating Kenyan food and go and eat Ghana. You know, <laughs> because people know that I love fufu and they were like, this is the only place that you're going to get fufu. Real good fufu. Real good fufu. Tell me, what so, is the secret So, Mama Ashanti, the secret behind it is a solid partnership. So I'm not the sole owner, mm. we are three. There's myself, there's a gentleman called Hawas, who's from Nigeria, okay. and there's Nana. So Nana is actually, the, he's also Ghanaian, he is basically the one who's the managing partner. So he's here normally day to day, it's just that as a good Ghanaian, he's gone to London mm. for holiday. <laughs> you know the way you, like, you guys like to do it. <laughs> So, Ghanaians are London, yeah. So he's gone to London for, for for holiday. But yeah, so because we're a partnership, each one of us plays an important role. I deal with the strategy and the marketing. Uh, Hawas deals with the finance and the operations, part of the operations. Uh, and then Nana deals with making sure that the kitchen works and on-ground customer uh, experience. So the three of us together have made this partnership work. Um, my first restaurant failed because the location was not right. Mm. My second restaurant, which was with the same partner, failed because the food quality was not good enough. My third um, opportunity, we never even got to put the money in the ground because <laughs> we came together, we put the money together in a bank account. We kept on looking for a location we didn't find. Mm. And then after maybe three months, one person will come and say, oh, you know, my car has a problem. Can I take out X? Mm. Or my mom is not well. Can I take out Y? So we never got up. So this is the fourth attempt and was very successful. Was it worth it investing in this restaurant here in Kenya? Yes, it's been worth it. And let me explain. The payback may not necessarily be in dividends, in mm. financial. The payback has been... This, for me, was a project to ensure that the community, where I see the West African community, had a place to come and find their food. Mm. This is also a place where when Nigerians or Ghanaians or Cameroonians come into the country, they know they can come and have some of their food. This is also a place where we have been able to bring Kenyans and they can come and they can eat and they can understand. Oh, because they watch a lot of Nollywood. Mm. Ah, this is okra. 
oh this is fufu oh this is yeah this is so we are able to <laughs> this is also a cultural place okay. so for me this assignment is not necessarily about money this is about bringing the west african culture to east africa mm -hmm. yes and bringing the community together 27 years in kenya yes you know apart from the restaurant apart from you selling clothes there should be something that will keep you in this country like what <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but um, are you married to a Ghanaian or a Kenyan? Of course, a Kenyan. Ah, you see? It's like I know it, yeah? <laughs> you, you met your wife in Kenya, yeah? Yes, I did. And I think that's the reason why you're still here. It's, it's, it's part of the reason. Mm, it's part yeah. of the, no, part the, of the, the reason. Part of the reason, but you said the main reason. <laughs> Maybe there, there could be Mama Shanti. Uh, uh, oh! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, but she is a lot of the reason why. Mm. I said, yes, I'm married to a Kenyan. I got married 20 years ago. Whoa. So I think that made me settle very fast. We have two kids, uh, 13 and 12. Mm. And uh, yeah. You know what? I'm so happy to see a Ghanaian investing in Kenya, which means that it's time for Africans to invest in their own continent. 100%. Oh, okay, you say 100%. 100%. So means I shouldn't even continue my question. I, you're you're <laughs> preaching to the preacher. <laughs> so let us know. There are so many Africans watching us right now. Yes. Instead of them investing out of the continent, yes. do you think it's advisable for us to invest in our own continent? No, I don't think it's advisable. I know it's advisable. If Africa is to grow, we had the first generation who were what we call Pan-Africanists. And what they did was to work on the, the political independence of Africa. Mm. Now, in the second generation, we are what we call Afro-optimists mm. and Afro-catalysts. To be an Afro-optimist is to be optimistic in Africa. Why would you take your money out of Africa mm. when you're optimistic? But to be an Afro-catalyst, which is what I believe in, is to invest. I would rather invest in Uganda, invest in Zimbabwe, invest in Sierra Leone, than take my money to Europe. Why? Wow. I wouldn't. The, first of all, if it's a pure interest, the, money, the, the rates that I'll get on the continent are better. We understand the risks of the continent. We understand the people of the continent. If you think about it, um, the, the lines which have been drawn for African countries were drawn by somebody who was drinking something very cheap, eh? like worse than palm wine. <laughs> Yeah, you know, people, people don't understand the lines that you're talking about. What lines are you talking about? This, the, the, the geographical lines, or rather the political lines which are drawn for the countries. Somebody just took a, a, a ruler and drew Ghana and Togo, this Benin and Nigeria. No. If you think about it, the people, they, are, they share culture. Mm. So yes, 100% I agree that we need to invest in Africa as Africans. We need to understand that if you are born in Kenya, mm. Uganda, Tanzania, the region minimum is part of your stomping ground. You should feel free to move across and do what you need to. And you should feel free, more importantly on the whole continent, because it's, it's ours. And it's, once we're doing even the Africa free trade, mm. the only way free trade will happen is by me knowing you, let's assume I'm from Uganda, you're from Kenya, she's from Zimbabwe, and we come together and we do business together. We know each other, we travel, we see. Because if you don't travel and see, you're also uncomfortable. You might think... Uh, because I think people don't understand what is going on in different African countries because we as Africans don't know each other. No, we know London. We know Paris. Eh? We know Dubai. But we do not know Zimbabwe. You know, we do not know Sierra Leone. So we, ha we have to travel more. We have to meet more people, and we have to invest more. If you had a chance to change something in Africa, what would it be? The, thought, the mentality of our political elite, the mentality of our teachers. Our teachers need to, to teach the youth to come out to be entrepreneurs, job creators. That's number one. The problem of Africa youth is not going to be solved by civil multinationals or civil service jobs mm. in the public sector. It's going to be solved through entrepreneurship. It's going to be solved with people opening their minds, taking their skills to neighboring countries. It's also going to be solved if we turn our mentality, change our mentality towards agribusiness. We have to till the land ourselves. We have to go back to our roots, farming and till the land ourselves. Whoa, I feel like I need to talk to you more because you have a lot to share, even more than your restaurant. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. Yeah, but uh, tell us where to find you whenever we come to Kenya. You can you can find Baba Shanti at Mama Shanti. <laughs> uh, which part of Kenya? Which part of Kenya? Yeah, which part of Nairobi? Nairobi. Yeah, in which part of Nairobi? Lovington. Hey, I heard Lovington is for rich people. Man. I, I think you're one of them. Me, I don't know about rich people. <laughs> I know about I know about people who are working hard to build economies of Africa. Yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to thank you so much for talking to me. I thank you. Your time. Thank you.